In 1999, I bought this old Rockhopper mountain bike for two months worth of paychecks. 24 years later, I'd like to make it relevant again. In today's video, we're going to do just that. We're going to turn this old 90s mountain bike into a modern gravel bike. So what is a gravel bike? For me, it's a road bike that'll take me all those places I want to go. With that in mind, here are the ingredients you need for a modern gravel bike. The first thing you should really consider if you're thinking about doing this is frame geometry. Mountain bikes are longer than their road bike counterparts. The frame I'm using is an 18 inch, so it measures 18 inches on the seat tube. That same frame has a 22 inch top tube, so when put together with drop bars, that frame is going to fit like a 56 in a road bike. So if you're thinking you want to do this, keep an eye on the top tube length. If you get that wrong, the bike will be stretched out and you won't be comfortable. I've found that the smaller frames tend to have shorter top tubes. So if you're like I am, five foot 11, you might choose a medium frame. Shorter than that, you might even be a small or an extra small in a mountain bike frame. What you really have to keep an eye on is that top tube length. All right, let's start by taking this apart. You know, I have had this bike for half my life. I think I'd like to have it for the rest of it. Instead, let's use a different frame. So I lucked on this frame on Craigslist. This is a Stump Jumper M2. So the Rock Hopper is a 96 model. This is a 98 frame. If you hold them next to each other, they're nearly identical. What attracted me to this frame, I really liked this style of frame. I always thought they looked nice. I like the paint on it. The only downside is that it doesn't have any way to attach a disc brake. So the first thing I want to do, I want to make a mount for a disc brake caliper and I want to braze it to this frame. I drew up several iterations in SolidWorks and printed them out. This is the one that fit the best. I'm going to use an ISO mount. That way I can install a post mount or a flat mount just using appropriate adapters. This measures 9.4 millimeters thick and it needs to measure 7.3. So I'm going to take two millimeters roughly off of this surface. I'm using an end mill and this, this is a quarter inch end mill. It's because that's what fits in my drill press. So that's how that turned out. Could be worse. I'm pretty happy with it. And it is now the correct thickness to match the width of the dropout. So now I'm going to put it back in the mill and I'm going to start cutting it to shape. There we go. Holes are drilled. Matches the 3D printed version. I am using aluminum brazing rod and map gas. I bought both of these at my local hardware store. I chose to braze this mountain place because I wanted to show a way that most people could do it. Not everybody has a TIG welder, but you can go to the hardware store, get this stuff, and with a little practice you can braze it in place.
The strength of this joint depends on how much contact it has between the frame and the mount. You want as much brazing material on as you can get. To try and match the paint on this frame, I went to my local auto parts store and I bought every can of blue they had. In this case, it was three cans. I sprayed a piece of masking tape with each, stuck it on the frame, and then I checked it out in various lighting conditions and picked the one that looked the best. In this case, number three, a color called Intense Blue. The second major consideration is components. A modern gravel bike, by industry definition, has drop bars. Most inexpensive drop bar shifters are designed to work strictly with road components. These old mountain bikes use a 73 millimeter bottom bracket. The road bottom bracket standard is 68. So because of that, you can't use a road crank set on one of these old mountain bikes. You have to go with a mountain bike crank set. Mountain cranks tend to have a wider Q factor than road cranks. What that does is it pushes the chain line further outward. I've found that road front derailleurs don't typically have enough swing to accommodate that further chain line. Mountain front derailleurs do, however. In this case, I'm using a mountain crank with a mountain front derailleur and a mountain bottom bracket. And lastly, there's a difference in brakes between road bikes and mountain bikes, at least when it comes to cable pull or mechanical brakes. Road bike pulls less cable when you pull it than a mountain bike brake does. For using the road shifters, you also want to use road brakes if you're using mechanical brakes. The third consideration when doing this is fitting larger wheels. These old mountain bikes came with 26 inch wheels. Fitting larger wheels is doable, but there's a couple things you need to know. On the front, since we're replacing the brakes anyway, you can install a 700C fork. The only consideration here is that these head tubes will not support a tapered headset. So you'll have to find a fork with a straight steerer. Fitting the rear wheel is just a little bit more difficult. I've found that these old mountain bikes that had 26 inch wheels, you can fit 700C wheels with a tire up to about 32 millimeters in width. Any wider than that and you'll have to cut out the seat stay bridge.
And just like that, we now have a modern gravel bike. Let's take a look at what we built and then we'll see how it rides. I've put about 100 miles on this bike since I put it together, and I like it. It's comfortable, it's fun to ride, and it's proving quite capable. I have made a couple changes since I put it together. I do wanna walk you through those, but first I wanna talk about fit. Because these frames are longer, to keep me from having to use a really short stem, I used a zero setback post. That moves me forward about 20 millimeters and lets me use a normal length stem. Because these mountain bikes have such a short head tube, to get the handlebar in the right position and to keep from using a ton of spacers, I ended up using a positive rise stem. So this one is a 90 millimeter stem with a seven degree rise. These mountain bikes tend to have a higher bottom bracket than a road bike. Because of that, when you get the pedals in the right spot to have the seat at the right height, you end up being quite high off the ground. You can see I'm on my tiptoes here just to hold the bike upright. That's not a problem for me. At lights, I just shift to the left a little bit, but it is something to be aware of. The big change I made after I put this together was changing the wheels and tires. I got a good deal on a DT Swiss tubeless wheel set, and I found a used set of WTB tires. I went with that because it allows me to run tubeless, and these tires are wider. To fit these tires, these are 35s, but they measure out at 37. I did have to cut out the seat stay bridge. The last thing I want to talk about is this disc brake mount and using brazing to attach it to the frame. If you decide to add a disc brake mount to one of these old mountain bike frames, it is highly recommended that you find someone who can TIG weld that for you. A TIG welded joint is going to be significantly stronger than this braze joint. If you do decide to use a brazed joint here, make sure both surfaces are absolutely clean. The more brazing material you have on each surface, the more overlap, the better. You can see here, I built this out and this entire section about my fingers width is brazed material. When you make your disc brake mount, design it so you have a lot of surface area for that brazing to bond to. And then after the brazing is done, minimize how much material you remove. The more material you remove, the weaker this joint becomes and the more likely it is to crack. I spent about $730 on this build that was for a from scratch build, so that included buying the frame and everything from there. If you're starting with a mountain bike, those costs will probably be less. I know some of you are wondering, why would you do this? For the same amount of money, you could have X gravel bike or an old X road bike. And the reason is, you know, there are thousands of these old 90s mountain bikes laying around. And they ultimately will end up in a landfill. You know, they don't meet people's needs anymore. But by doing something like this, I can breathe new life into one of these old bikes. And honestly, this bike is made in America. I think that's pretty cool and definitely a rarity these days. But the real answer is I wanted one. I wanted to do this. I wanted a 90s style gravel bike. 
This thing is awesome. It's cool. It's unique. Nobody else has one. I'm not going to run into another one on the trail. And in the words of Ryan George, so the video could happen. I think this is my favorite video I've made so far. I really enjoyed making it. I really enjoyed the project. It turned out really nicely and I had a lot of fun. I got a lot of satisfaction out of it. If you enjoyed watching today's video, consider liking it and also consider subscribing. It's the best way to support my channel, help with future growth, allow me to do more projects like this. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.